All right, my friends, welcome to our class. Today, we will be painting our cat eye. And to start the class, I will double check if you have everything again. We will start to do our oil painting class. In front of you, you see my palette. This is a big palette. And first, before we start, because many of you are beginners, I will tell you how to organize your palette for future artwork. So that will, will make more sense for you and will be more convenient. First, what I want to tell you, first layer of my painting, that's how I personally paint. I do not pre-mix my oils uh, from the tube with any medium oils or with uh, even with liquid. I do not do that because I paint very, very thick. And that's what's make my painting slightly different. On the next layers of painting, I add in different yellow, like um, different oils, like uh, you can use linen oil or any favorite oils you like. But today we do not mix this with our paint. We wanna maintain our paint today thick. Please keep it in your mind. Another thing what we will need to have is uh, turpentine. It's our ingredient. I have it here in the container. Before you start to squeeze your paint on a palette, keep in your mind easier combination. In very corner top, white. Everything here, you're going from side to side, cold, and warm. So here I have everything cold and here I have everything warm. I mix that, so ignore this one right now. And here I have colors from lighter to dark and here also from lighter to dark. In a perfect world, this paint is supposed to be here. <laughs> right? Palette like this lined up. You have empty space here in a palette when you can organize your paint how you want it. And you have plenty of space to work with mixing a mixing brush or, or the, with your colors, and you still will have plenty of different colors to work with. And when I premix my colors, I also follow the same steps. You see, I have light, my light warm colors, I have my light cold colors, and my dark colors going to the left. If you organize this palette this way, it will be much more easier for you in the future to work instead of um, looking for your right colors in your palette. Another uh, very convenient, um, I think I told you that before, very convenient uh, way to keep to maintain your palette fresh when you're done and mix with your painting. And let's say you wanna paint tomorrow again, what you need to do after you're done with your work in the end of the day, you put your paint in a box, you can buy it in a Michaels and put it in the freezer. Next, very next day, you after three days, after four days, your paint still will be there in good shape so you can work with this. So if you premix a little bit too much of paint, that's fine, don't worry about that. You can use it again, okay? That's just convenient tool and I noticed that um, if I, in the end of if my paint, a little, little bit to dry, in the end of session, ready to dry, I use this and I use a uh, little bit drop on top of my oils, pre-mixed colors, and I put it in the freezer. So next, if I know I will be working after maybe one and a half week, then I still will be safe with, uh, with my paint and I can, can still can continue to use this uh, mixed colors. So let's now talk about colors, what we will be using. First here, what you see, it's white plus lemon yellow, first mix. This white and this lemon yellow. Second mix I have here, it's a cadmium yellow. In my case, my cadmium is a little bit more on the orange side, but you can mix, your, your cadmium will be maybe a little bit less of orange, but it's also fine. Uh, we using this and white, and we have this mixed together. To mix this color, we'll get closer so you can see that better. If you notice, this one have a little bit more of the green here. So what I was using, I was using white, this lemon yellow, 
and this blue. When I'm talking blue, I'm talking about this particular blue. It's called different companies, sometimes different, so I name it Caribbean blue, it's just easier to remember. More of the Caribbean look, and we mix in this light green. We will be using that around the eye, around the pupil, this our color. How we mix in the colors, uh, if you are new for that, I will tell you first, you will pick up, let's say I pick up a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, and let's say a little bit of this blue, right? And I am collecting and smudging, sponge, like pushing it down. And again, collecting and pushing it down. I don't need to spread it all over the place. Please use comfortable palette knife. A small, you see these proportions I have a little bit different. It's a little bit bright, a little bit more green, uh, blue, I was. Okay, can use this cadmium a little bit more. Okay. And you see as I use more cadmium, my green become a little bit deeper, darker, and closer to this sample. Okay. So now I have two slight different shades of the same color. One a little bit lighter, another one a little bit dark. So we have this, this too. Next step, we will be working on light colors. Now we will be using this like light, nice, beautiful light blue. And you mix this white, regular white, and ultramarine. Uh, you can see that better. Okay. I love this color personally. It's traditionally favorite for many artists. I have it on a palette right here. And I used a little bit more of white and less blue to get my light to a nice color, okay? Next one. This one is more on a purple sign. I have different type of purples and I recommend you when you buy purples, uh, buy darkest one. Like I have a deep, deep, it's almost black. When you're looking at it, it's um, French oil, big tube. Um, this color, when I even paint it, it's, it's look almost almost like deep, deep black. But sometimes purples in the store look like that as well. So do you should have should you have that? Uh, yes, it's not bad color for many, many different reasons. Uh, but you can mix some uh, clean colors with white and get similar. But this one, it's very good to pre-mix your black colors. So I always recommend to have deep, deep, dark purple in your palette for your future black mixes, because I do not like original black to use on my painting. Even I have it here, you see I have a very small tube, it lasts me probably for one year. Uh, and I have it here, because I don't use it a lot, I uh, mix my own black. And the recipes for, or for your black colors, I put on a chart. And uh, if you do not have a black, then you can use um, uh, these two combination of these two colors purple and orange, and you will have your black. Or you can have a green, darkest green you have. Uh, in, uh, this, uh, in case, case uh, in my hands right now, it's raw umber. When you mix this and plus purple, or plus blue, or plus uh, dark red, uh, dark red can also give you black. Uh, why I do prefer mix my own black because black from the tube make your painting um, look like a beginner painting. And um, the difference you can see only when you look close up to the painting. So I do never recommend you to use um, actually the paint from the tube black. But if you have that here on your palette, it's you need it or I use it only in case to premix the color. So in this here, I have here dark gray and I have a black. Why I have two of them? Because if I thin them, you will see they have, they represent different shading. This little bit more on a blue and this little bit more on, I would say like 
warm warm black color and this is lighter uh, lighter and have a grayish tone so for this color i was using white purple and gray probably a little bit less white and a little bit more gray than purple for this color here we will be using it for the eye i was using this red in my case i was using i have many different shades of them i was using this one they kind of like burn sienna i have let me show you, i have three varieties of them they look very much alike but they, when you paint them, they look really slightly different. And I play with all of them until I find out I like this one the most. And when you work with this color, if you add more white to that, you can have a pink instead of red color. And for here, for this, I was using this Sienna and I was using white and I was using some gray together. For this mix, I was using purple, my dark brown, raw umber, this one, this one, this one just raw umber itself. Raw umber, very, very common painting, paint to use, very, very common for all artists. So I always prefer to have extra big tubes. So if you paint plenty, um, I recommend you to have a big one. Okay. When you will be working, when you'll be start to painting right now, please make sure you have very, very, uh, how to say, big size compared to the final, compared to the image I sent you. Because if you're doing study of the eye right now, study of the eye usually means you paint just the eye for the purpose to understand it. So we do not focus right now much of the fur. We're not gonna focus much on uh, uh, details and the spots as our future classes. I'm gonna give you this main anatomy about um, what is important about the eye. When you uh, make your drawing or when you uh, trace your image, if you trace your image, please make sure you uh, print three times bigger image than what I send it to you. Make it big. Bigger is better for you for the purpose of exercise. And when you finish this painting, you will send it to me and we're gonna go to critics together and look what can be done better and how we can fix something what was accomplished very well. So when we start today, first when I wanna show you my size. So my size is this big size of my palm, I would say. And I did this drawing and the drawing purposely for you so you can see that better. And I will do the same thing right now with my brush so you can see better what we focus at. And right now, make a decision on your canvas how big is that will be. Like if I have a size, palm size like that, it's like about one third height, that will be a good size, but do not make anything smaller. Too, too, too much smaller, like this much, this eye, it's not, not work, <laughs> it's not gonna work for us. So today we'll do study. First, what is important for us when we um, do our anatomy, we need to separate skin, where skin start and where the eye ball separated from the skin. A lot of times in small pictures, you do not understand that difference. This is our eyeball here inside. This is our iris. Pupil, when you place the pupil, make sure you find the proportions. And I will teach you a little bit about proportions right now. I know you know about that plenty, of, but just in case I will tell you. So let's say you looking for the size of your iris. You measure by pencil, how big is that? And you think how many times this size fit in the size of the iris. So like I start from here to three times. So I can see I measure on the original photography 
it's about the same thing three times it's feet so i can see my iris or my pupil is this size and i can see also my bottom here is longer distance than here so make sure you don't put it straight on the middle if you will be looking for the perspective of that the eye looking too slightly to the left at this distance also bigger this is smaller i would move it a little bit more over there you can erase on a canvas if you're working with pencils that's fine you can check distance here and here and you will see this distance is bigger compared to this distance that's how you know the position of the pupil that's important and if you make the pupil um you can change make it wider or small depends how much light around the cat you know the uh, cats have a much more small pupil when it's like plenty of light and if we paint cat in a darker uh, uh, environment then people will be much bigger um, we have a good daylight, we have a good reflection. So right now, when I found my perfect around, see this round, this, I imagine where my iris is. This is top lid covering that. I still maintain this shape. And on a picture, please look, you also will see this line very, very well. It's look like a darker fur line, but a lot of times artists ignore this line and it's look like this top area totally flat. And we always need to make this area darker to make the top lid separated. And, and that will give you extra three dimensional. And another thing that I also want to point today, please look on a picture carefully. We have a dark eyelashes on a tiger and we have a light stripe above the eye. But on the light stripe, we have a dark eyelashes. A lot of times when you paint cat, they also have a regular cats that have same situation. And people thinking that stripe of the tiger, it's the light stripes is the same thing as eyelashes. No, it's not. Eyelashes is much longer. If you see on the image, it's gonna be this far long. And the fur ends here around here, not gonna go any further. Another thing that can help you to do construction of the eye, you put a pencil from one corner of the eye to another corner. It's, uh, you see this line? And before you start, you just create this line in your mind. You just change, you make the decision about the size and that help you to identify the positions of the corners. It's always very helpful. Another thing, here, that very corner, this is usually our darkest dark, and this is where I hi our highlights will be. And a lot of times artists put highlights here in the corner and do, they do not exist. The highlights, it's inside of the eyeball where eyeball meet the skin, but not on the skin. That's com very common mistakes on a, on a cat's uh, portrait, on a cat's painting. This line, also another challenge. I will wanna make it clear so you understand and good. Okay. This is skin, bottom lid, thickness of the skin. And this light, another line here. In the beginning, it's, if you look on the picture, it's gonna be black, it's gonna be dark. We have a highlight here, it's our wet area. We have a darker area, which started developing inside and a highlight going straight on the edge. When we start to paint, it will be very important, but this most confusing area and I will put extra attention for us to notice that. What is this thing? This part was, is the actually part of the cat uh, eyeball. Can be very different color, depends on the breed of the cat. And if you paint dogs, the same thing. Sometimes it can be white, sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's purple, sometimes it's uh, yellowish, sometimes it's dark brown. So 
um, when I give you a video to look on a cat, he is slightly looking around over there with eye. So this area, please notice in different breeds of cats, if you see a little bit of the eyeball, pay attention what color it is. And it's not always white like with human. Sometimes it can be darker. And when artists paint very common mistakes, when they think this part, which is a part of the eyeball, they think it's iris. And they paint this line of the iris, what they create here, all the way here, which is a misplaced anatomy and uh, do not help to add a correct expression. That's so, so important for us. So please make a um, note for yourself. When you paint your animal, separate iris, from the eyeball. Sometimes you do not see the eyeball because of the position of the uh, iris. If the cat looking straight into you, you're not gonna see that. That's why I choose that particular picture. So you see this position from this position, anatomy even complicated, but still uh, very important to know. Now I get closer and we start to paint. I will be using right now my smaller picture to make a smaller uh, brush to make a statement. What go well, where, so you can see more, more details. Oh, I forget one thing. Uh, we have uh, highlights here. Please notice here, I have this line. And when you do sketch, also notice that will be our cast shadow from eyelashes, right? That will be our pupil. And this area where we have reflection, which highlight, highlight is reflection from the sky. And you can see bright blue colors over there. That's the blue color we um, mixed for. But when you start to paint, uh, I always recommend you to start from dark to light. Why? This way your paint, painting always look much better in the process of it. And if your canvas is white, if your board is white, your white always stand out as your highlights and it's developed painting nicely in the process of it. So what I will be using right now, um, I, can, I can put my uh, palette vertical, don't worry about if you do it as well, oil not gonna drop anywhere, <laughs> so it's safe. I will be using this color, it's my uh, dark purple uh, with uh, dark gray, a little bit of blue. I will be using this color right now, and every time I will be using certain colors, I will show you what I'm using. I put my palette right down here. So I'm starting with my darkest dark. If you mix your colors right away with uh, plenty of um, oils, you will have a transparent, a lot of transparency in your painting. I like to paint pink and that's what I am doing. And what that's, you, you can see, I almost using a brush like a, a pencil. This is black and purple right now. When I paint, I paint layers which means in the first layer, I will have main positions and main darks and lights. So all my main values will be there in the first, first layer of painting. Okay, now I'm going with my dark. I'm using uh, my raw amber plus gray right now to place my darks.
Now for this side, I using this color with the premix before. It's kind of like a cold, cold lighter brown. For the line under eyelashes, I use darker. And dark eye coming back to the same colors as here. On the eyelashes area, it's usually our darkest dark. So I do not shy to use my darkest value there. The darker I have over there, then better my eyelashes will stand out. So I create my, I block in my darkest. So this is what's darkest dark. Now I move here, the very, very corner here. It's almost the same color as um, pupil. I use purple and black together. More purple than black. I leave this corner, so I remember I have to apply highlights over this, so I avoid this, avoid that area for now. And I also, if you look on the picture, you can see this here, it's slightly lighter brown. So what I will do for this area, I will be using the same color as here. That was my lighter cold brown and make a statement. I know it's dark as well, but not as dark. And I leave a little bit of white over there. So I remember I have a highlight over there just in case, just to make that statement. All right. For the iris, for this area, all around here, if you look on the picture, you will see it's about this much distance all the way around, we have a texture of the eye. And that color will be brown. I would say this darkest brown plus green, plus a little bit of um, white in there. To get that texture, we will be moving with our stroke slightly towards the center. And another uh, layer we will have, please look on the image, you will see we have another circle like this here. Here we will have more orange, and right here we have a little bit more blue area, blue green. Should be noticeable, should be seen. And one more thing what I will be doing different compared to this photography, I will bring extra light, hint of light, in the very bottom of the iris, and I do it for all my cats and all my animal paintings, and you see a lot of um, benefits out of it, and I will show how, how I'm doing it and what is make, what's make big difference compared to what you see on the image and what you see on the painting. But we follow the same guidance right now. We're going from dark to light, and we're working all around here right now. What is this I left here? This is actually blue line where iris meet the eyeball. Can you see that blue line over there on the image? It's very uh, well seen. So you wanna make sure you believe it here. So this area, I don't touch uh, blue colors yet. I leave it alone. I then gonna touch it here yet. So this where my iris ends and I will be focused on this area right now. I mix in a brown, take on a brush, brown, Green. Yeah. 
Let's see. So first, when it ends, I can do very, very slight duplication of brown line. So I can see very good the shape of my iris. Okay, I make a statement. That was green plus brown. Next color I'm using, I use the same mix what I had before, that green and brown, and I add a little bit of this cadmium yellow to my brush and I have lighter color. That's what I have now. And when I'm working in this, I leave right now some distance for the texture. I leave some space. We'll make more details later, right now, some of them are longer, some of them lighter. A little bit longer here. And if you see right now, this looks a little bit more orange. What I have done, I used this, I add that, like I told you, and I also add a little bit of this color to have this orangey hint to my browns. All right, you see very good directions of the stroke. So when uh, in this stage, I do not look very, very uh, smooth. What you can do, you can use this brush, fan brush, or this uh, round brush, mom brush, and use this to pull Blend and blend it together, but you're going towards direction in the middle of the eye. It all will make more sense in the end. Just take this roughness away of the brass stroke connection. And when you use this um, fan brush for this technique, make sure it's always dry. If it's wet already, you see I pick up some of the paint. So I have to use napkins right now and I clean it against the napkins, but I do not put it in a solvent. Like I just squeeze it between dry napkins and you see it's a bit dry again. It's more fluffy again. So when it's fluffy and dry, then I continue working this technique but if my edges it's very very wet instead of blending it will give me stri stripes i don't want that to happen and this touch is very very light very very soft i will do some pretty heat and i use my napkin again right now and i dry my fan brush so i can use it for next step you see it's dry again Okay. Now I will move and we'll be working around the highlights right now because the highlights is complicated shape. I want 
to see and keep it defined and very well pronounced. Even so much eyelashes reflection over there, I will avoid eyelashes reflection. We make it in the last step. Right now, I will look in all of this area as blue purple color, blue and light blue and darker blue color. And I will focus on the reflection and I will be using a gray, uh, gray color. Let me see. Same color as what I was using here. And I will try to find a shape first. My shape for the highlight. That's my dark. again brown green and a little bit of gray on this side my brush is almost dry when i'm working with this so i repeat my pencil shape so i have something like this here going over there okay so i make a statement and leave it for now next step we will be working here if you look in an image you will see we have very interesting um beautiful beautiful texture of the eye we have some of lines coming from the pupil to the sideways. And I'm using gray color right now plus brown. And pull this from the middle to the side. And get myself some direction how far this line go. Very, very light, very light. And now I will be working on these colors. What I will be using, I will be using, remember we mixing these colors in the bottom before, this slightly green. That's the color we will apply right now. And you see, I'm using a very small brush and I am working away from the pupil and kind of between the lines. Mm -hmm. One more time. I use in this green, what I have, but I decided to add a little bit of purple. So the slight purple premix I use. So I mix this and this little bit together. I want it a little bit bluer, brighter and stronger, more green than on a photography because I know it will give you beautiful effect, effect in the end result. Whee. Working from the middle to the sides. You see how dark colors here, right? But it's pretty much the same part of the iris. What I need to do, I need to mix smart these colors and these colors. So when I pick up on my brush, these colors I use while they blend in, I mix a little bit of this brown and I pull it down here because it is the same color, but it's just in a shade area. That's why it's slightly darker. Now, when I go down, I can make it lighter and use the same color.
And because this part will be our lightest, what I do to make this work, I'm using this lighter green color, what we mixed, and I use a little bit of this, lemon yellow, very light lemon yellow. But it's only right here in the middle, closer to the center. That will give us shyness, uh, luminosity, and, and trans, uh, kind, of, kind of transparency of the eye. It will start to shine from inside out. And here, if you're looking on the image, this area we have more on a red and ochre color, right? Do you notice that? And we use a little bit of this color here, but it was a little bit darker value. So here we're gonna go lighter, but warmer. So if here we was using a greenish kind of coldish colors to here, we're gonna go warm. So what I do, I use right now my cadmium yellow. I mix it here with a little bit of brown. That's my palette. And I want to apply it here and soft blend in it with the center. If this is the darkest part, here also darkest part. So I use a little bit darker to make that statement. Oops, too dark. I need a soft blend here of all of this. Maybe this in some way. Um, I can see in the middle part here, my stripes disappeared. I want to bring them back. So I will use it again. I just wash my brush. Very good. I shape it very, very like this flat. So one side, you see from one side, it's almost like liner brush. This is like a spoon. This is like side, very, very thin. And I'm using my brown, my darkest brown to bring my texture back. And you also can use a little bit of um, redness in there, a little bit of the red color. That's also will be nice. Even you don't see that in the picture, cats have that sometimes, it's usually beautiful. Try to repeat my uh, pupil shape line to make it a little bit more oval and more even angles. No, no angles, more even um, around shape. And also, I want to make sure. It's equally spread color and a blend in here, it's softer. Okay, now we will do the same magic what we did before. I'm using this brush again, right? And now I'm pulling it from the middle, from the pupil, the side. I do not touch inside with the pupil, I try not to. <laughs> and I pull it away. By doing that, my stripes blend in better with the color. If you push too hard on this brush, by mistake, you can pick up too much paint out of canvas. You don't want that to happen. So you have to be very, very light touch. Dude, my porcelain glasses knows. <laughs> Always paint very, very light, very light touch. No textures. Very, very light. But still, pigment is there now. All right. Now we have our darker. 
our uh, light is on the light. And this is, when you look on the picture, this one's supposed to be kind of uh, darker than this one. But what I will do, I will use something what do not exist in the picture. And please follow me and you can compare it to the picture. I will start with this lighter, warmer colors in this middle of the part of the iris. And then bring here highlight, not highlight, but lighter, um, lighter, brighter color in the bottom. You will see what happens. So what I'm doing right now, I will be using these three combination of colors. I have it in here. I can mix this and this. Let's see. And the brown. if you notice, I don't use one equally even spread of color. I play and add them, mix them, and pull them back and cover some area on the darkest area here with green. That will give us more texture in the future. I use a little bit of this color to mix with my warm. So it's not just the warm colors. I have to attach some of this. When I say this, I mean this, light and green, to blend them softly. So we don't have very strong defined separation between those two. Right here, you can see it's slightly darker. And also please notice the direction of the stroke way I apply in it. I try to make it very, um, how do I say, connect. I, I try to make this stroke connected with the texture of the eye. Same angles. Use the same brush again, pull it a little bit. If you look on the picture, uh, if, if you paint exactly what you see on a picture, it's not, it's not gonna be bad. You can maintain this. What you see on a picture uh, and that's will be okay painting, but if you want to have really draw attention to your work, please look what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm using this lemon yellow and lemon yellow, it's very transparent color. You see, I have no white right now. It's just yellow itself, no white. If I have that color right here, And most important, it's no white because the white uh, canvas already 
we have a white under so that yellow can give you very very nice shiny effect Depends of what kind of cat, we can see it more or less. Or also where the light comes from, we can see it more or less. Okay. And more red in the bottom here. Warmer, warmer brown. So we didn't make any texture yet. We just give us guidance of main values. And again, using this brush, and pull it in and out from the middle to soften the edges. I also want to point to you something uh, I think I found very interesting when I paint cat's eye. When you have a better separation with cold and warm within the eye, it's always a little better. When I start to blend and I can see a little bit more warm start to show on here, but I like it a little bit on the colder side. So I will bring this a bit more blue within my green to make that statement. be working with details we can work more on the texture uh, on the next layer when this will be dry we can make it a bit more the you know, uh, vine lines more perfections a little bit more um let's say on these beautiful curves like i start to move and this a bit brush like this if you notice it's a slightly uh like this sideways too to bring more uh, iris texture and give very realistic look to your painting. But it's better to do it when this layer is dry. So you know you do not pick up any extra paint from what you have done already. Okay. Now I can see uh, compared to the image, I need to increase this darkness around here. So I will use my gray, the gray color I have, and I use my gray, so this gray, it's paint gray. I love paint gray. And I have this uh, raw amber. So this two, I'm using to outline it. And um, here it's look like this two colors. This is my paint gray, this is raw amber. So I combine them together and I will make this statement. And also when I move my brush I'm more from inside out, from outside in direction, I want to maintain this direction. It helps the texture. Please some way. If you notice on the image here, a little bit darker. So this part of the nose catch a little bit less of the light is more in the shadow. So I will do the same thing. 
I will use my raw umber. Plus burn sienna together. Raw umber plus raw sienna because this part is still warmer. Burn umber and raw sienna. But I always recommend for the first layer, do not overwork it. It's better if you leave it alone and don't try to paint on wet oil. This way you can accomplish more next layer and don't ruin what you have done. All right, we will move right now a little bit on a blue touch around here. So I will be using this mix. And so it's purple, a bit blue. Purple, blue, and white. Remember, we mixed that in the beginning, but it's not that blue. It's not this blue. It's this. It's looked much darker if you look at that. But compared to the value of what you have on the image, on the very top, especially, we need to have that darker. And make sure you, you clean your brush very good because we need to have this color uh, well seen. Now we'll do the same thing right here in the corner where if you notice that it's kind of nice blue line over there between the skin, which will be here, it's a little bit darker, and uh, eyeball here. Keep it a little bit lighter. Now I'm using, on the very edge, I'm using this blue, the light, light blue, when I'm working on this edge, because I can see stronger light over there. So here it was purple. Here, I have that blue. I do blue until here. And from here on, I will start purple again. Not purple, purple, but this mix. Same mix here, what he was using. From here, it's become darker again. I do not go far away from the iris itself. I stick with the iris shape and work all around. And please make sure you pick up plenty of paint on, the, on your brush. Because if you are a porcelain artist, uh, usually um, we have a habit of painting very, very thin. And oil paints like good amount of paint. In this very corner, if you look over here on the image, you will see somewhere here we have a highlights, right? So I just use this light purple gray, purple, white color to make a statement of it so I don't lose it. And this area, I use my brown again. Here. A little bit lighter and brown.
And as we did darker here, I would say we need to go a little bit darker here, but it's gonna be raw sienna and raw umber. So I will use this and this color, this one. I don't know if you're used to the names of the colors yet. So I, just in case I show you, eventually I think, you get more comfortable with the names. Because in porcelain painting, names of the colors sometimes can be very, very different. Uh -huh. You see, we need this darkness here to bring beautiful blue eyelashes. It will be very, very nice. Also, when I paint, I prefer to paint from the screen instead of from the printed image. And I have a reason for that. Um, when I paint from the printed image, sometimes the company who printed to you, even they make awesome, fantastic job and they did very, very good quality, very, very good quality print. Still, they very, very limited on a color palette. And when I have it in the computer, I have better access to change my colors or increase the size of the image if I need it. And also the, because the screen, the colors become much brighter. And if you notice my paintings have a lot of brightness. I tried to paint before from, um, uh, from um, also the regular printed images. And I, I felt like something missing. I was chasing the correct colors all the time. And to paint from the screen was a big help. Okay. All right, now we will move on this area, which I think it's very difficult <laughs> to understand what's going on here. So let's try. First, I will use, you see here, we'll have a dark, pretty dark uh, line. So I use my darkest purple plus a little bit of black. And make a statement of my darkest dark. Why I use purple to my black? Because purple create coldness within a black. And when you vanish your painting, vanishing you're doing in the end of your um, work, and before you vanish your oil paintings, all your dark is dark, look a little bit dull when they dry. And your real dark black colors, you can see only after you vanish it. So when it's wet, different black or different dark you created, it's not very, very well understood which one is more on the green side, which more on the purple side, which more on the blue side. It's hard to read. But when you vanish it, it's will pop. Okay, and now I move from here. This is the area we already have done. Corner, that will be the probably the hardest one for, to observe because it's darkest with dark, <laughs> right? Okay, I'll try to do my best. So here we have a purple and black and that curve line here exists. We have a little bit of highlight here and some thick line of dark going almost halfway to the area of highlight. Here, our uh, eyeball color meet with this darkest color. So 
I will blend them together. You can see separation by small little line of wet uh, highlight in between. We can make it later. Right now it's just a blending. And you see, I left that white here, like when white ends here, the blue, another light end starts here. So th this is where the most complicated part, make sure you leave this light and you leave this line, what you have here, just keep it, do not paint anything over there. So leave it like this for now. And now we will move to here, to this area, which will be bottom lead, it's where um, skin reflected the blue color of the sky and look almost purplish. I will be using this color. It's, uh, we used that before already for the eyeball. So I was using it here. I will be using it here right now. And from here, I start to have a highlight. Do you see that on a picture? I avoid it and I keep it right now as that white line. Mm -hmm. You'll see. I pick up bigger brush that one then because I want to make it a little bit faster to cover our basics. Corner. Now I use a little bit of blue towards the middle, towards the highlights. A little bit more blue and coming back to purple and gray. Here in the corner, we have a shadow and also we have an area where skin meet the eyeball. So this is combination between that purple black and that blue what I had before. So I add a little bit more purple black in the right here in the corner. And this line here going right here. You're almost there. This corner have highlights, but it's not gonna be our light. Light is blue. We use purple. I use purple right now to get some directions. And use some gray. Now we will move a little bit up here to create our value. I use right now this color. This is, was a little bit of purple, gray, and plenty of white. It was very, very light color. And I just want to create this idea of the background 
where eventually we will have a fur of the top and our darkest dark where it should be. I don't pay too much attention to details. In this moment, I wanna make sure my anatomy where it should be. I don't wanna lose shape all right and here on the left side it's going a little bit darker the opposite in this area it's going a little bit darker so i will be using my dark purple and dark gray that's really the stripe going away from there And I'm moving this fur stroke a little bit like this so I don't forget to wear my fur going. I don't lose. Just keep myself idea. All right? And if you have a time for this, you can play with idea where you have a stripe. We're not gonna go today over there, but I don't want you to get lost. We have here. Distance between the eye, we have this area here on the corner. These colors, it's pretty much light purple, light gray. And we will, when we will be studying the fur, I will show you how this fur working in this part of the eye. Okay, that's for now. And let's come back to the eye. To this little spot. We need to understand when we look on the fur here, this area here, where we have a light fur, it's like this, this far, right? We have a lighter, darker, lighter again. And our highlight is same light as this fur, right? So make sure when you will be working with this fur, you don't make this fur white. Lightest light will be here and even lighter will be on top of it. So I will be using my blue, this blue, this blue color. I will give right now a little bit of idea of the underpainting on the fur, on the fur, very transparent and very light. No details. I'm using um, right now a liquid. with gray and purple. Liquid, everybody remember liquid? Liquid is this. Again, liquid here and a little bit of this browns, just to make nice, nice, transparent value over this. Why I'm doing that? Um, when you paint fur over liquid, your brush stroke go much, much easier. Right now it's look a little bit like a preparation. Usually uh, when I painting uh, with liquid, I using it as layers between the uh, between um between the layers. Sometimes I'm using it as base for my brush stroke go smoother and easy. So that's very 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 convenient, very convenient. So right now we just make statement. 
right? And I will do the same thing right now with the soap big brush. I just follow direction where my fur will be. Same thing here. And you see also when I'm doing it, I'm stretching this oil over liquid and it's giving me direction of the fur would actually already exist. I don't have to do extra work. Liquid just let me deliver that effect and it's usually a very, very simple way to do fur. I do exactly the same thing. Black inside on the liquid. to get an idea of the fur. This is okay. All right, so let's come back to the middle part. And you see how much my brush become wet with this? Okay, yeah, you can see how much is wet. So for next time, it's not good to blend. So I have to clean it up against the paper. Again, I do not wet it in a mineral spirit or in a tur uh, turpentine. And I bring it back very, very easily. It's already fluffy and dry, so I can work it again. Next step, we will work a little bit here on the highlights. When the light on the eye, it's cold, so his eye kind of in a shadow, this part will be bright and pronounced. I use white, plenty of it, but not just white. I use white plus blue. Which blue I'm using? This one. I always recommend to stick with same color palette over all painting. This way you will have a better harmony in your painting. If you do not have a harmony in your painting, your painting technically can be done well, but it will be not pleasant to observe. It's your eye not gonna rest on the painting and you want to have nice, comfortable, how to say, um, inviting painting when you finish it. So what I'm doing sometimes, I write down the recipe of my paint, um, but what I show you in the beginning of the class, what I pre-mix, I write it down on a piece of paper because I paint sometimes five, seven paintings at the same time and when I make the recipe, maybe I paint next layer of my painting after three or four weeks and my palette maybe will be dry. Then when I have a recipe of my painting, I write it down and attach it to the back of the painting. And then when I come back to the painting, I have my, my colors. That saves so much time for me and that's convenient. Okay, if you notice right now, I start looking from here to left and towards the left side, I start to move in darker colors. So I move towards from blue to light purple, light purple. So you can use this and this together, but more of the blue. Because on the left side, we have more shadows, a bit too dark. It's still light. Still reflection, but it's dark. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, when we have all these values down, we can see right now that this green, it's not dark enough. Can you see that? So what we need to do to make that continue uh, working for us, we will need to make this green darker. So I will use my green, what I was using before. And go a little bit on top of it. You see that? And then we have a better separation. Or also when this layer dry, we can make our highlight also a little bit lighter if you want to. Both will be fine. You can do either or. This brush. Use a lighter brush to mix my highlights. In my paintings, I always also make highlights bigger than I see them on the image. And that also beneficial for your artwork. So if you see, if you need to paint some uh, animal, you didn't commission and uh, you need to make a beautiful expression of the animal eye, or do some details, you definitely can make your highlights, what you see on the image, much stronger. And that will help you very, very much. Your painting will, your eye will pop on the painting and it's look very, very um, eye catchy. Right now, we have this highlight very strong. It's our and the painting for our eyelashes to go above this. We always can make it darker if you want it. The artwork you see me post on the Facebook many times, it's have three, four, sometimes five layers. So don't think like you have to deliver everything right away from one layer. Oil dry about three, four days, depends what kind of oil. If you use liquid between the layers, your painting, one of the layer paintings dry one day, or maybe sometimes several hours. Like if I touch the wet area right now, when I do not touch, uh, when I didn't use the liquid, it will be very wet. But here it will be sticky. Sticky, it means it's getting dry. I did purposely here a little bit of liquid just to make statement about fur, how the fur will go. So you can play and exercise that as well. I use the fur brush right now. I have two of this. When I use fur, uh, when I use brush for the fur, I pick it up so I can see bristles very, very good. I do not overload my brush with paint. I wanna make sure I have a distance. And when I paint, I use stroke like this and sometimes I turn the sideways and sometimes totally sideways. And by changing the angle every time when I do fur, I develop one or another direction because I have right now plenty of liquid. My brush go very, very smooth. And for you as porcelain artists, you're gonna feel it's gonna find it so, so beneficial. beneficial. Right now I'm using the side of the brush. I use white 
with little bit of blue in there. And for some area, use white plus a little bit of yellow. But it's never just white. Even on the image, when you're painting it, it's, when you observe the image, it seems to be white, but let me tell you something. When you will be painting white paint just itself, your painting will look flat. I'm sorry, I'm left-handed, it's hard to see. Um, You always change the angles. If you make a stroke same angle over and over, it will be looking like well brushed animal. And you want that to look a little bit more realistic. And give a little bit of, can you see that here? For the bottom, I will be using darker gray to pull this hair down first from the eye. Short, small ones. You maybe see I'm doing it very fast, but do not try to make it so fast. It's not necessary. Most important is just always play angle. A little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit change, a little bit one side or downside. So always slide different angles even you maintain idea of main direction of the fur. You keep in your mind, you see where this fur going. You can see that it's very strong, very well seen in a photography I sent to you. But it have to be slightly different angles all the time. And you go one stroke above another one. And if you have a light fur, you're always doing darker under like skin tone, whatever the skin tone is here, you have dark skin. And here you apply first dark and on top of it, you make a light. You don't paint white uh, fur on a white canvas. It's not gonna be there, it will be um, invisible. So a little bit here. Our third class, second class will be nose. We will be studying nose. And the third class will be ears. And when we're gonna do ear, we're gonna study the fur as well and directions. And I will show you a little bit more techniques on the fur. Right now, I just wanna give you a little bit of the guidance around the eye with this fur. And this area right now is white. I don't know if you see that. I did it on purpose because I need this darkness darker on the skin so I can pull my light fur closer to the eye and I have my under painting or my under color darker value to make my light stand out. So this is what I was told, told you about. You first doing a dark, and then you bring the highlights and develop more and more highlights with layers. Right now is just the first layer. I did a longer stroke. Now I will show you tiny short ones. It's look on the side, I'll put you on the side here a little bit more. Like this long, no, no longer than that. I apply brush uh, on the paint. Very, if you can see that here, let me see, okay. Like this, uh, very much on very, very ends on the brush. On porcelain painting, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I pick it up 
and apply it very, very tiny bit and keep my bristles separated on a brush. I use a gray color right now. And now we can see bottom lead better and I separate it from the fur better. Synthetic brush, it's very good for this technique, but I prefer in oil, use soft synthetic brushes. They allowed you to do what I show you. If you will find a bra uh, very rough brushes for traditional oil paintings, you couldn't do what I show you. It will be impossible because rough brush pick up too much of the paint from the canvas. And soft synthetic brush allowed you to apply more paint with soft touch on your canvas. Oh, I'm sorry for the noise. Unfortunately, I cannot fix the noise. They fix, they fix something outside. All right, so this is what I want us to do today. If you feel confident enough and don't want to wait until this layer dry, then you can try to do this eyelashes, which will be here. Maybe they should at least the same brush, right? You can see they're going this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way. So they go in kind of towards the center, like it's photorealism, photorealistic look. And you pull this in, just like that. If you afraid and you think, okay, it's maybe a little bit too wet, then let it dry and you can do the same thing. What I'm doing right now for your dry surface, but it's not all. This is just a reflection on the eye from the eyelashes, but we have longer blue eyelashes covering all of this. That also will give you a lot of, um, um, how to say, nice, beautiful, beautiful, really, really beautiful effects. And add the realism. I'm using my dark gray to do that. I recommend to uh, change fur brush often because the paint gets stuck in and you cannot deliver the soft stroke. So after four, four paintings, I'm sometimes changing the brush. All right, this is our first layer. Please look at this final destination. And I will see you on the next class.